welcome to subramani uh, i'm going to talk to you about uh, telling you that your business is not your retirement plan uh, that's a mistake which uh, many of us commit saying thinking that uh, here is a business which we have built over the years and when we want to retire we will just sell it off voila and that's it that's our uh, retirement kitty right well it's not so simple i'll uh, talk of two three cases one was a friend trying to sell off a business because he wanted to go abroad and the idea that he had in mind and what he actually eventually would get there was such a huge gap i mean uh, for him then suddenly it became it was not even worth uh, Uh, worth selling because there was nothing really worth selling because uh, what happens with many entrepreneurs is uh, they build a business which is largely an arbitrage on law because when you are very small you can afford to not pay some tax not pay gst not pay sales tax or whatever is the taxation uh, pay very little of income tax or things like that and your business looks very profitable now the same profitability does not uh, stay when the business grows so what happens is you suddenly do some more things you do this you do that there's no focus i mean you, uh, a colgate would make only toothpaste right but an entrepreneur is not like that he would do a lot of related business he would do this he would do this so there would be uh, for example if you are running a magazine you run a magazine you do an event you start a website uh you you meet ceos you you so therefore some opportunity comes up so you do all that and it's a hodgepodge and uh, suddenly you think oh this business is getting me about say let's say 30 lakhs a year so i should be able to get about 1 and 1/2 to 2 crores for selling this business wrong completely wrong what happens is this 30 lakhs a year is completely your salary what happens for many entrepreneurs who have started off they don't even realize that today instead of being in a business if they were employed they would be getting a salary of 40 50 lakhs plus esops etc etc salaries have really gone through the roof especially for those uh, so called uh, businessmen who started in the 1980s or 90s right so what happens is you don't even realize that you're not really doing too great a business it's a small arbitrage on law uh, i mean in the le- in legal terms that you're doing certain things which is the right way of doing wrong way of doing and things like that so a little bit of cheating on taxation and that is the profit right so the minute you appoint a ceo and you pay him or her a salary um, a decent salary of say 25 lakhs the complete profits are written off it's gone there is nothing left and the quality of people that you have recruited is not so great that uh, you can't find a replacement for them so uh, but when you try to replace them you find that they're very expensive but the people that you have are not very productive so when a new entrepreneur comes in uh, he looks at it and says well i can't uh, will an investor invest money into this business answer is no yes somebody will some friend will he'll say okay i'll put 5 lakhs i'll put 10 lakhs now these are not uh, uh, proper evaluation done this is just that okay my friend wants some help so let me put 5 lakhs hoping that one day i will sell it off for 5 crores kind of stuff no not that they are hoping to get anything great but they've all heard of private equity they've heard of venture capital and so they think that they are funding somebody uh who's actually a failed entrepreneur all right now if you think that this is going to be your retirement corpus you're very sadly mistaken so once in a while it is necessary that you evaluate the selling price of your company and uh, most companies when, which are uh, driven by entrepreneurs are uh, sole proprietorship they may be private limited they may be public limited they may be listed it doesn't matter these are sole proprietors because there is one man or one woman who is running the show who completely controls it who has no intentions of giving up uh he or she is just hoping that they just die in the chair so that they don't have to think of valuing the company and selling it now this is our the entrepreneurs uh and when you ask them they'll tell you no we are running the business because uh, we are very committed and uh, we think it's an in, uh, it's a very important thing to do, run our business and things like that but the quality of people that they recruit uh those people are not capable of running the business these are typically employees who have joined 
and like 70 percent of the world employees they are not capable of finding a job elsewhere so they will be there and the uh, the uh, uh, the sole proprietor uh, will uh, do a dog and pony show saying oh he's been with me for 17 years she has been with me for 14 years and things like that but if you actually make their cv and see whether they are capable of finding jobs elsewhere the answer is no now what happens to an entrepreneur as he gets older he realizes the need uh, for selling off the business but no does not have the capability to sell off the business so he's got it listed uh, or uh, he is uh, about to get it listed and he's got people he suddenly has a huge guilt pang saying i can't leave my employees in the lurch so suddenly now the last few years uh, he is working for the employees but make no mistake, he may not have enough money to retire because he thinks that he is going to get 6 crores, 10 crores, 20 crores, whatever for selling off his business and that is his retirement plan or that is her retirement plan and that is no way how they will get that kind of money if they actually leave and go. Uh, if, the, if they just drop dead, then that is bad news for the employees and the existing other shareholders because nothing is going to come out of this business. They have no clue how the business was being run. There is nobody who knows how to run the business and those who run the business do not know how to do the wheeling dealing with the uh, sole proprietor owner was doing. He, he was meeting somebody, getting some contract, uh, implementing that and then uh, finding that next month he didn't know what was uh, to be done. It is not some um, uh, products that they are selling, it is not toothpaste that they are selling, it is not uh, shampoo that they are selling, it is just some services that they are selling and it could be very uh, expensive engineering services. For example, I met one um, uh, person who wanted to sell off his engineering company and uh, he had no clue how to do the valuation and he was running it in, uh, in South India. Uh, and uh, uh, he was a, a very big engineering giant, PSU giant would come and give him some work and he would happily be uh, servicing that client. He had no clue how much he should be charging. So he would make some product, design something or change the design of something and he would say, oh, I will charge you 75,000 and they would negotiate and pay him 75,000 but they would pay him after three months, four months, six months. Uh, whatever and this man was very happy that he was charging that much and he had no clue what uh, he should be charging there was no question of his understanding costing his understanding cash flow nothing his son was not interested in the business at all son had taken to uh, to IT and uh, he had migrated so son was abroad this man was uh, close to 70 years of age running an engineering outfit with a few uh, people who were uh, he would proudly say oh i have made them engineers right so these people are not very qualified if you went to buy that business you wouldn't pay a dime for it but he was a very critical supplier for a big PSU who swore if you went and met them they would say oh he's just fantastic there's no better engineer than him yes but they were not willing to pay a price they would not buy the business so this man had no clue what to do with it he was earning money yes he was earning about 15 20 lakhs which was more than sufficient to run his household he needed four five lakhs but he did not have a corpus which he had created out of it he had not removed enough money from the business to create a retirement corpus so I think it's very important that you uh, you should know how to plan your exit. So by the time you're 50, you should plan your exit. You should try to recruit a partner who will be with you uh, during the sale. Uh, you uh, recruiting employees who will be with you is of no use because employees could leave anytime. And then th an employee may not leave, but you could get married to a girl who could push him to leave the place. So that, that's it. That's the exit of one of your employees. And you have to have three, four uh, potential CEOs who are capable of running it for you when you are uh, around. So that when, uh, when you are not around, you will be able to sell it. If you don't do any of those things, uh, if you think that some uh, white knight is going to come and invest and take over your business, you are sadly mistaken. It, it doesn't happen that way. Uh, largely because you are not thought of selling your business. So selling your business is very important. Uh, how to sell your business? It's a longish uh, process but if you do not plan to sell your business, if you do not know how you are going to sell your business, please do not consider your uh, business to be your retirement plan. It is not your retirement plan unless you know how to encash it. 
so when you are uh, uh, closer to retirement say 55 uh, onwards at least start withdrawing money from your retire from your business and start creating a retirement corpus don't treat your business as your retirement plan uh it doesn't work that way i have seen many people struggle and uh, wonder how to live in retirement thank you